Welcome back folks, my name is Last No Meal, and today we're going to talk about Braindance, well, about the updated features that were released on Night City Wire Episode 1. Before that, I made a Braindance lore video explaining a bit more of a general lore of Braindance, but CDPR expanded that in the latest build, so let's analyze. So Braindance was one of the most anticipated features in the game. Generally, it's used for entertainment where you have a recording of something or someone, either a life of a very famous rich person or, in the case of this gameplay, a flatliner which is a brain dance that ends in death. Now, brain dance itself is full immersion, meaning you feel everything which was recorded, you feel the emotions of that certain individual you're watching, so of course you have people who like to take a brain dance from time to time, but of course there are those who are addicted to this feeling so they just cannot stop looking or using like good uh, brain dances and of course they cost good money especially if you can record a good brain dance. So you have people like these thugs who are going to record a brain dance for these BD freaks as he says because they pay a lot of money for a good one, that's why V screams at the end of it because it felt so real. Actually, by recording this heist, they would make money, that's why this thug says go in full adrenaline mode, but of course, in the end, the thug gets assassinated by his friend, providing a flat liner so he could fetch a higher price on the market, it was actually rigged from the start on this guy, he wouldn't get that extra money if it only ended as a heist, if it ended as a flat liner, Oh boy, he would be rolling in eddies. After that, of course, you meet Judy, who is a brain dance editor, meaning she can edit the entire scene, making it interesting and basically modify those brain dances to earn eddies. Now, later we go into a brain dance editor, which is separated into a visual and audio layer. The visual layer allows us to move around the scene, as Judy says, like our own little sandbox. We can rewind and play with a recording, including an option to scan objects and people that BD Roller managed to record. It really is impressive technology. Objects also emit heat, you can scan them like this gun, which is given by a different thug. After that, they switch the audio layer, which allows us to hear what was going on inside the store through various points that capture or well reflect sound waves, to, because the roller picks them up even from afar. Also, we can scan people and there is an option for quick hack here, which will be interesting to see the options for this. And also we have access to cameras during the entire thing, but we must be on the right time, in the right moment to spot the person of interest, you know, walking by in a sense. That's why we saw his friend shot him during that particular moment. Now, of course, this is just the tutorial brain dance. As the developer team said, brain dance will be used for these sort of investigations, even for main missions, because before breaching something, we must know where we can find a certain item or a certain person that we have to go to or assassinate or whatever. It's basically how it's going to be done during the heist on Arasaka in the prologue, where you have to go inside first and then, you know, do all of that. I'm not going to spoil it, but um, Adam Smasher scene that we see in the trailer is seen through a brain dance itself. You will also be able to learn more about important characters in the game through brain dance, which is cool because you relive it through their eyes, which gives you a lot more lore learning possibilities in a sense, and I'm glad they're implementing one part of the lore through this. Of course, you will have more traditional uses of brain dance besides missions, because there are still a lot of cool things to experience, but we shall see how optional this will be for missions because not everyone wants to do every brain dance and it might actually ruin the pacing of certain missions for them and that element of fun. Personally, I will go through them because I find it interesting. It's somewhat an expansion of the Witcher senses but on a whole nother level. And if it's useful for missions, I mean, why not? If you are playing a stealthy build, you kind of want to know about the area or the objective itself before going in. It really is impressive in regards to overall animations and feeling you get, since this is a recording or well repetitive event, they can really go ham on animations and I really like how they did them in this scene, especially when this thug uh, pulls out the gun on, this, on these people. It will be interesting to see how many brain dances we're going to have in the game and what missions will be done around it and how it actually benefits the entire game. 
Of course, as I said in my previous brain dance video, be careful in which brain dances you go into. There are a lot of different ones that can be edited. I mean, I'm not sure if they will have some traps or penalties or altered reality, but there are the adult ones, of course. Maybe they put them in the game, maybe not, we shall see. So besides the usual relationships and, you know, ways you can actually do that stuff, you can actually do it through brain dance as well. So that was my updated analysis of brain dance. I actually never covered this properly, so hopefully you learned something new about it besides the things that were shown. And subscribe for more Cyberpunk 2077 videos. I do make a lot of them and join our growing community on Twitter and Discord. I made a Patreon page, if you were looking for an extra way to support the channel, check it out, and huge thanks to my current Patreon supporters. This is LKM signing out, and stay classy everyone, bye bye.